Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to my friend's backyard in Germany. And um, today we are talking all about the Chevrolet Bolt EUV and how it charges, its charging curve. And I think the important thing to discuss here is this is really the only weak link of what otherwise is a pretty good car. I really like the Bolt EUV, um, especially for its price point with the new updated pricing. And uh, I really don't think you can go wrong with going with one as long as you don't have to take long road trips. And that's what this video is about. We're talking about, do you even need fast charging for a lot of use cases? And then I'm gonna show you how well or how poorly the Chevrolet Bolt EUV charges from zero to 100% which is something you're never gonna do in the real world, but this way we can log the entire curve. You join me at wide open throttle in the bolt. It says low battery, it does 29 miles an hour. However, it says two miles of range remaining, and this one's gone all the way out. So I don't know, we kind of drove it hard down low to drain the battery. BMS might be up, but basically, I'm not taking my foot from full throttle. We are making it to this charging station and it's only doing four kilowatts. So let's test the handling of the Bolt EUV as we come through here. It says one pedal driving out of energy, charge vehicle now, zero miles range remaining. I'm literally to the floor. We're gonna make it to this charging station. I swear we will. We got this right guy. Right over there. Okay, sorry for coming through like a crazy person, but we literally have no energy. It will not output any power, so. Have to skid through the parking lot and we're gonna oh we are just gonna make i'm literally floored and the thing's dead <laughs> all right which charger is gonna work which charger is gonna work this one says available on that side so i'll just pull up a little janky will it even back up at all should we even try no that's floored it's dead <laughs> that's what i call a zero to 100 percent charging test it's out of energy do fast charging EVs even matter? I'm gonna let the Bolt EUV's charging curve play along in the background. You can certainly stop and look at it throughout any time you want. But the thing is, I recorded a zero to 100% DC fast charging session on this car. Also, I think it's funny how the first plug-in didn't work. It was the only available CCS plug at the entire Electrify America station in Loveland, Colorado at the time. And so I was like, oh no, if this one doesn't work, it was literally the one out of eight plugs. It was the only one listed as available. And I was like, oh, we're screwed because I pulled in at wide open throttle on this thing, uh, completely dead on the battery pack to do, you know, a full dead to full curve. And, um, it also had some BMS calibration issues. I don't think this car has ever been drained that much because it went from like 2%, then one zero. And it's like, good luck getting there. That's on me. I should have calibrated the BMS beforehand. Maybe I'll make another video on that before, um, or in, in the future, I should say. But anyway, after we made that, you know, what the heck is going on with charging infrastructure in America video that went live last week where, you know, we discussed some of the challenges of DC fast charging. All the charging companies started to call and, uh, you know, their excuse here, this excuse there. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's just like, okay, but now our station in Loveland is working. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So now we got more plugs up and running at that station. The next day, they actually started coming online. So pretty interesting to see. Okay, let's talk, do you even need fast charging? And the context of this is the Bolt EUV. The Bolt EUV has a roughly 65, 66 kilowatt hour battery pack. Almost all of it's usable. You can set your charge limit, I think from 40 to 100% and 5% increments, which is great. Um, and here's the thing, the Bolt EUV went from being a not so highly recommended vehicle because they didn't have the tax credit and a few other things to now with the new pricing, starting under $30,000 US, at least for when this video was made. It's a high recommend for a very certain type of person. And that's where we bring up this question, which is, do, do you even need fast charging? And the answer here is for many people, no. Many people do not need fast charging. Some stats on this particular car, just to put it in context. It took 45 minutes to get from zero to 50% in the Bolt EUV. Now, my friend Tom also did a uh, charging test of the Bolt EUV. I think he started a little bit higher state of charge, still at zero, but not totally drained. And he got 40 minutes, zero to 50%. And he had a couple kilowatt higher peak than we saw here. You know, we're, we're you know, going at the, you know, picking at straws basically. Basically, but uh, we saw a peak of I think 52 or 53 kilowatts and he got the full I think 54 or 55 nears makes no difference in my opinion and um, 
you know, 45 minutes to 50%. The Porsche Taycan, which is a larger battery pack, went from zero to 50% in 10 minutes flat. And so that is the difference we're talking about here. This car from 50 to 100% takes an additional almost hour and a half, maybe even a little bit more to go from 50 to 100%, whereas the, the Taycan can go zero to 100% in uh, under an hour. So, um, you know, th this is just putting it in context for everyone. I understand different cars, different price categories, but many people don't need the fast charging of a Porsche Taycan or a Lucid Air or a Tesla Model 3 or Model S. They just need the good range to get to their office, maybe on a long commute and home charging. And this Bolt has good range. We've done a 70 mile per hour highway range test of it, and it has really good single charge range. It also is extremely comfortable and it doesn't look so bad. It's not a weird car. It's got a great sound system. When you option the Bose with the sunroof, somehow those are connected, the sun and sound package. And it's like a really nice car, but then the blatant oversight here is just the charging peak of 55 kilowatts. Now, I once when I reviewed this car for the first time was over a year ago, and I was talking to one of the GM engineers, and he was so excited to tell me all the changes they made because they also refreshed the, the Bolt regular hatchback at the same time. And he's like, we added a washer level sensor here, and we did this little thing here. And I'm like, but what about the charging? And he's like, oh... Wish you didn't bring that up. I'm like, yeah, I know, but you're, it's me. So <laughs> my understanding is it's actually the cabling from the DC connection input to the high voltage battery pack that is the main limiting factor for high charging current. And I think it only does about 125 amps. Maybe it does 150 amps. I, I don't actually know. I haven't done the math, but it's somewhere around there. Really low input power. And... Um, you know, I, basically I asked him like, why didn't you just change the cabling? And he's like, well, we wanted to, but I couldn't remember the exact reason it was. I wish I knew at the, I did know at the time it was accounting or something. You had to re-engineer this, but it was like, it's not a major technical problem to overcome the slow charging of the bolt, but Chevrolet chose not to do it uh, for whatever engineering or budgeting reason they had. And for many people, it doesn't actually matter. I have, we have Bolt owners in the audience who will be watching this video that, that they'll be saying, I drove my 2017 Bolt across the country and it was totally fine. And it wasn't an issue. It's like, okay, yes, you can go across the country in your Bolt without major issues. I agree, but you're going to be spending rather than 10 or 12 minutes at a charging station, 40 minutes to an hour per charging station. And so if you have the time, then who cares? Go for it. That's fine. You can save a lot of money on the upfront purchase cost. If most of your charging is done at home, you're totally fine. And, um, you know, so that's, that's option a, this car is a high recommend if you don't need to do a lot of long trips or you need to do the occasional trip where you don't mind sitting at a charger for a long period of time, which you're looking at now in the background, it's just chugging along, you know, I'm sure under 30 kilowatts or around there, which would just drive me insane. Then comes the other flip side of this, which is it's 2022 you have a really good car. It's very nicely engineered from a drivetrain perspective. It's it's like a really solid package, the Bolt, in my opinion. Yes, I know they were catching on fire. That problem's been solved. They're replacing the battery packs in the early ones. Um, you know, that never really bothered me too much, which is why I never went big into that coverage. I'm just like, yeah, it's an issue. They'll fix it. They did. They replaced the batteries and you're good to go. Um, but the thing is, it's 2022. We're coming up on 2023 model year cars now. And, you know, even the cheapest ID4 will still charge at 130 kilowatts with a mid battery pack. I think I tested that battery pack here in Europe at 137 kilowatts. And this Bolt, which is only a couple thousand dollars less, is, you know, right in there at basically less than half. And so is that acceptable? And my personal feeling is no. I think it's the big and only major oversight on this entire vehicle. However, for many people, like I mentioned, just doesn't matter. So there you have it. Also, by the way, if you're a Bolt owner and you do plan to use charging quite often and you're going to be going to these charging stations and juicing up and all this stuff, like, huh. Really, this is the problem. We have a charging station throughput issue. And so if you do plan to road trip a lot and you care about the greater good of the e-mobility industry, 
it's better to drive a faster charging EV because you can get in and out of the charger faster. Maybe you're not in a rush, but the person waiting in line behind you might be in a rush. This is becoming more and more common, of course. So there you have it, the Bolt EUV's charging curve. I won't even plot it out or do anything. Basically 45 minutes to 50%, I wanna say two hours, 10 minutes to full, plus or minus, something like that. It delivered a little bit more energy than what's in the battery pack, uh, you know, full to dead. And that's mostly because there's losses with DC fast charging, any kind of charging, of course. Uh, but the higher the power level, the more losses. So there weren't too many losses in this particular test. Again, uh, the car went from fully shut off dead to completed at 100%. And um, yeah, basically, poof. This is not a vehicle I would want to road trip in for too long. But again, if you keep it between, let's just say, 5 and 55% on a road trip, it's not the end of the world. I actually think it'd be kind of fun to drive one across the country and just prove that it's doable. We know this, but I think it'd be fun to make a video. I'm sure there's other YouTube channels who have done this. Um, so there you go. Bolt EUVs charging. The only downside of the car. Otherwise, great car. High recommend. Uh, if you don't need to do a lot of DC fast charging. Do you even need fast charging? For many people, no. I do like that you can at least still charge it at 55 kilowatts if needed in a pinch. Thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. I promise we have much faster charging cars coming to the channel, more interesting coverage, and I think there's one more video to come after this on the Bolt EUV, which is the Super Cruise test, which I have not seen yet. Jordan did that test, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how it did in the Hogback Driver Assistance Challenge. Thanks so much for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.